Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Bon Bosher, and today I want to show you guys how to make some basic simple pads using Thor's uh, synthesizer in Reason. The track that you just heard was from Away From Here. It came out a couple months ago, and I just want to show you guys how to make those lush sounding pads uh, pretty quickly, and so let's get started. Uh, first and foremost, I have a new project opened here and I also have this running through Ableton since I did have some audio editing and clips with this song in Ableton so I have to solo my Reason channel out real quick so it doesn't interfere with everything else but I have my new document here my sequencer there and my rack here alright so aside from the default stuff I have in my rack let's right click into it and create a combinator and then let's go ahead and create our first instance of Thor. Now what I'd like to do here for notes is I copied uh, the ones that were from that track there and just for time's sake and I'm going to throw them into the sequencer here. And that way we can just get started right away. We'll loop it that way we can keep hearing what we're making. Go back into our rack and let's get started. Right click on the Thor and initialize the patch or reset device here, but let's turn everything off. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a low pass filter in the third filter section and that way if I want to do other filter modulation or customization I can add more filters in these sections, but I want to make this the quote unquote master filter for the sound. Um, for this particular tutorial, I am going to turn off the filter 3 global envelope amount as well as the velocity amount. That way it doesn't affect any parameters. This is simply just to get started. When it comes to polyphony, you can keep it the same. Um, you can bump it up to 8, you can bump it up to 32, whatever you like, depending on how many uh, notes in a chord you want to lay down. Uh, and so what I'd like to do here is um, I set the low pass filters frequency all the way up by default and I'm going to turn the resonance up to 12 just to give the higher end just the tiniest bit of sheen and I'm going to go into my first oscillator here and create a multi oscillator I am then going to turn the detune amount up to about thir 32 actually about 30 and I'm going to keep the octave at 4 now if we listen to it, it's going to sound pretty dry and it's going to sound uh, pretty, it's going to cut off because of the decay and sustain here in the amp envelope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump these all the way up so that way no, um, er, <coughs> no volume is lost when I uh, play a note. I'm then going to activate the first filter to go, or not the first filter, the first oscillator through the first filter so then it gets routed to this filter here and we're going to play it out. So it's very bright and uh, it's very sheeny. So what I'd actually prefer to do for this particular uh, tutorial in this notes is I'm going to turn the octave down to 3. I know I said 4, but if you play your notes in a lower octave, you'll achieve the same thing. And right off the bat, you can hear multiple saws going at the same time to create a pretty wide sound uh, super saw if you will and um, we'll make it a pad here in a second but first I want to up the release so it doesn't cut off abruptly when a note ends and I'm also going to up the envelope attack pretty moderately to basically uh, make the note introduce itself over time and you'll hear what I'm talking about <laughs> way it's not as plucky or uh, cut off or anything. Now um, the second thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a first effect of a RV7000 Mark II uh, reverb. This is with a uh, Reason 8 um, otherwise it's just a Mark 1 but it's the same exact thing. And I'm going to keep the algorithm a hall and I can up the size a bit to make it a bigger hall sound. You can edit the room shape any way you want, but for sake of time, I'm going to just keep it at one. 
I'm then going to slightly dampen out the sound so not so much high end comes out through the reverb. But I also am going to bump up the high EQ to make sure that enough does get through. Uh, I'll keep the decay the same and I'll turn the dry wet down to about 68. And again, this is all up to preference. This isn't necessarily the right or wrong way to do things. It's just what I like to do real quick to get some nice, simple, lush pads going. So if we play it out now. With that reverb, it starts to sound pretty good. And it didn't take much to even get started. Now, if you want to have a pad undertone, and if you want to automate the filter frequency over time like I did in Away From Here, you all you have to do is just edit the automation, right click onto the, uh, the filter frequency knob here, edit the automation, it takes you to the sequencer, and you can automate it over any time frame you want. And you can start the filter frequency really low, you can start it at zero and nothing will come out, but let's do it at 30 just for random sake. Automate it up to 127, and we'll see what happens. And so you can create many different things very quickly with just one oscillator of a multi-oscillated saw and one low-pass filter. And the resonance turned up just a little bit to give it a little extra sheen and, um, and, a, and a nice wet reverb. And if you want, you can even up the reverb more to give it more of a, a way from here feel, <laughs> whatever you like to do. So um, yeah, it's very simple, very effective way to do it. And uh, if you wanted to get really tricky with it, all you'd really have to do, if you wanted to make a lush undertone with the high end, all you'd have to do is right click, hold shift in the combinator Create a line mixer. Let's drag it all the way to the top. Flip the rack by pressing tab. And let's click off those wires so it isn't routed to anything in the Thor. Let's route it to the first channel in our line mixer. And then the second will be through the reverb input here. So the entire sound in the line mixer, whatever we put through it, will go through the reverb, make it nice and wet. I'm going to right click on this duplicate the device and track and I am then going to clear the automation of this and I'm going to keep that at about 317 Hertz and make it a nice low pad tone so if I were to flip the rack here route the second Thor to the second channel of the line mixer so then it's going through the reverb let's solo it out and listen to what it sounds like so then at this point if I were to combine the two Thors in action it will probably be a little loud so you can always turn down the master volume again you can always edit the volumes of each channels and make each uh, synth different whatever you like to do um, the other thing that you can do for this is you can add a chorus to the lower end or the higher end of the sound to make it a little wider and fuller I'm gonna do it for the lower end and just turn the dry wet down to about 40 and leave everything else the same just for time's sake and I want to solo it out and listen to it again real quick and as you can hear, it's a little wider. I'm also going to turn the drive up to about 71 on the lower pad tone to give it a little more beef. Let's try to do both at the same time now. And that's it, guys. Uh, a very simple, effective way to make a nice lush saw pad um, with one oscillator on your Thor, one low pass filter, and you know, a, a big fat reverb. I'm going to save this as a ABB 
saw pad tutorial. And I'm going to make it available to you guys so you can download it and mess with it, make it exactly what you want. And I just hope this helps. And please uh, leave any comments, feedback. I uh, love to hear from you guys. And um, we're all students in this. So please tell me uh, what you've done with it. Maybe I can learn something from you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll see you next time.